very early in the pandemic. Most of the members on our research team completely dropped the regular research that they were working on. And we have been working 24 seven since about May. All right, let's see what we got. Oh yeah. That's about as good as it gets right there. We have a nice full sample container and that's uh, what we're after right there. That's what raw sewage looks like. A lot of times sewage disappointingly doesn't look like what people think it does because it's mostly clean water. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get a sample of people's toilet flushing because if someone's sick with coronavirus, when they use the bathroom and then they flush the toilet, there's a little bit of that coronavirus in their poop. And so this is a way that we can take a look without going to someone's house and saying, we need your poop. This is a way that we can, without disturbing anyone, get a small sample of a population's poop and then analyze that for evidence of coronavirus in the sewage. This is the Nelson lab at UC Berkeley and here's where we process the wastewater that we've been sampling. This is the tube of our wastewater. We're gonna be extracting the RNA, which is the genetic material from this wastewater, and then we'll be testing it for SARS-CoV-2. We are particularly pleased with this method because first of all, it was developed at UC Berkeley. Second, it's relatively fast. Third, it has a pretty low limit of detection, which means even if there are very few cases, we should be able to detect something. And then last, a lot of methods rely on proprietary kits that you have to buy, and there's a significant supply chain shortage for those kits right now. Our method is pretty much all in-house. It's materials like ethanol and table salt that are really easy to get a hold of, and that's been a great boon to us and a lot of researchers around the world that are trying out this method. You simply can't test every individual all the time. The beauty of sampling wastewater is that in a single sample, we can get information about thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people. This information can help the health departments identify where there are hot spots emerging, and it can also help them to know if the efforts that they're putting in to reduce transmission are working. We're looking for the amount of genetic material from the virus. So the more human hosts, the more virus, the more genetic material, and the more signal that we'll see in our test. And you can see all these ones that go above the line, this horizontal line. These are all instances where we've detected COVID. We're beginning to take more samples from more areas, and we're also taking samples more frequently. So as the project expands, we're hoping that we can connect to public health officials and that they can use this information for decision making in real time. It is so fantastic to have so many people all around the Bay, all around the world, interested in wastewater. Wastewater contains so much information that we can leverage to improve public health. That is true for this pandemic that we're currently experiencing and it will continue to be a valuable tool after the pandemic.